Hey guys, Rich from Richmond Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. Welcome to the end of the week and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Bugle. And I'm a little bit sad because we were promised something by AMG and we didn't get it. Noise! Deceptions! Joining me again on talking about not much in the world of Atomic Mass Games official reveals. It's Quinn. Quinn, how are you doing? I'm doing right. Uh, once again, lies, deception, every day more lies. So no Electra, Quinn, but we did get a little, a little tiki, tiki piece of information, didn't we? So we know that she's a, a full threat, mm. um, which I was, I don't know about you, Quinn, I was quite surprised that. I thought um, she was going to be three. Yeah, I was expecting three. I imagine it's the grunts that are the thing that have pushed her up a threat value. Like, typically from these sort of non-superpowered characters, they hover around the three threat mark. Um, unless you're, like, a blind guy who can see. Which doesn't really <laughs> sound like much of a superpower, if you ask me. But then no. you get to be the ballerina of Hell's Kitchen and be a four threat. And a terrible one at that. So very little official MCP news um, this week. But... Season 7 of the TTS League. And, you know, love it or hate it, the, the TTS League is still the single largest event um, every year that we have. And I know we do multiple a year, but every year, I think there's, there's like, what, two a year, Quinn, three a year, it ends up being something like that. Yeah, um, like two, two, two and a half, yeah. three. A number, a number. So, you know, we've had some pretty big events here in the UK. I think the biggest in the world at the moment We've had multiple 50 people or 50 person events, whether they're team events or individual events. And over in the US, they've had sort of 30, 35, 40 people at events. So we're starting to get there, but, you know, it's still 200 plus people. Uh, and I think it's still going to be a little while before we start to see that number of people in a single event. Um, so what it does bring is a whole bunch of stats and it, and it gives us a good idea Quinn doesn't it we spoke last week about how you know you can't really take a single event and gauge too much from it but what you can do is start to then look at trends over multiple events and then when you've got sort of 200 plus people attending a single event it does give you an idea doesn't it of sort of I hate to use the word the meta um, mm. but I think I think it does give us an idea of which affiliations which characters are more favoured so Quinn, 273 players across the board, 103 Central, 76 Europe, 58 West, and then 36 in Oceania. So a, a very big pool of people to, to take data from. And the first bit of data, Quinn, I want to take and talk about is uh, mono versus duo, and I suppose even tri, trio affiliations what, now. It, if you're going for duo, it would be trio, but it trio, sounds yeah. dumb. It All does stuff, sound like, dumb, yeah. You know... Uni affiliation, bi affiliation, and tri affiliation also doesn't sound right. Yeah, so... I don't know what it is. Basically, being able to field different affiliations in a single roster. Um, we've actually seen an increase in mono affiliation versus dual. Uh, so a, only a 2% rise across the board, but as there are more people, um, then there's more overall as well. Um, a. I think it's like 28%, so 70% single, or mono, sorry, 28% um, of people are taking two affiliations, and then 2% are taking three, um, which I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised that that number is even that high. I think taking yeah, three affiliations like, is still very, very difficult to do. Th three's a very strange one. Like, you can very comfortably work in two with the likes of, you know, Dark Dimension with Dormammu, or Black Order as well, because... Black Order, as an affiliation to slot in, is, like, three characters, three cards. Yes. Which, and, you know, like, then they just, they do their game plan on their threat level, and, like, you know, that might cover a base that you're potentially yeah. weaker at, right? Yeah, and then, you know, d d you know Dark Dimension is, is one card, one character, I suppose, yeah. but, um, yeah, interesting. Really, really interesting. Um, let's have a look at the, the most popular uh, affiliations in the game at the moment and I think for me Quinn there's always a plethora of things that that affect this I think what happened last season 
and what's been meta, and I don't like the word meta, but you know, what's been meta for a while, I think has an impact. New shiny things definitely has an impact. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I think in this instance, those new shiny things come in the form of two different things. They are absolute, you know, brand new shiny things, you know, sort of a la um, mutants. Or, uh, yeah, mine is, mine is in the exact same uh, <laughs> position at the moment. Um, or in this case, because it's the first time since we've, since we've hit 1.5, is um, all of the updates as well. So something yeah. that, you know, wasn't particularly good, now sort of rising up the ranks. Um, but also, there's a real divide between, in particular, what's happening in the rest of the world and what's happening in Europe. Let's take Avengers, for example. So across the board, Avengers have been taken 15%. Uh, the highest taken, taken affiliation in uh, in the league. 15% for Central, 21% for West, so really high on, on the West Coast. I mean, um, you know, Aven Avengers led by Captain America, you know, pa patriotism. <laughs> um, Oceana, 17%, but only 9% in Europe. And I don't know about you, Quinn, but that really does reflect any, whether it's single day gaming events we've done, whether that's been Friday night fun at a local gaming store. People, at least in the UK, they're, they're not big on the Avengers. Like, they, they mm. just don't seem to want to play them. Like, um, I've played a lot of Avengers, but, like, I've only really taken to one event. Like, I don't know, they're, they're just not something I break out for events, typically. Don't know why. Yeah, and I think, I, I think we may have, I think we may have had some Sam Spam fatigue with mm. Avengers. And I think even though, and it'll be interesting to go and see who's winning that that sort of battle between uh, Sam and Steve. But I think there's been some Avengers fatigue. And I think that could be one of the reasons why uh, why we're not seeing them. Um, closely followed though, Quinn, is Brotherhood of Mutants. No surprise here at all. Um, you know, the release of, uh, of your boy here, plus the fact that we found out both of these guys are in affiliation um they've got some strong strong gameplay now they Don't were they? already good they were already you know a a plus tier uh, they may be tipping up now to to a plus maybe even maybe even s tier uh in terms of of an affiliation and what they can do um crimson no no, no surprise there they've you know they've been a a strong, a strong affiliation for a yep. while. I, I imagine that's going to go up as well after the mid-season break because yes, you know, Shadowlands Daredevil will be out. I, I would be interested to see how many people are picking up Shield as well. Yeah, be really interested to see how they how they do. Uh, Guardians. I mean, these guys have gone from um, you know absolute almost at the bottom to the fifth most taken. You guys They've know me. Gone They've gone real zero to hero, right? They really have, yeah. I mean, you guys know me. I love I love my Guardians. Uh, I am the captain now, uh, for those that are in the Discord. It's um, a shame you're not on a mega level threat, though. I'm not on a mega level threat, no. Um, but again, 11% across the board. 22% uh, Quinn in Oceana. And I want to say that is the highest representation of any single affiliation in a yeah. single region, he's twenty two percent. Like uh, next um, highest also seems to be in Oceania as well, with seventeen percent Avengers. Twenty one percent for West. For West, they've they've got oh, them there. God, yeah, I literally like that. literally next to it. But <laughs> I think uh, I've got that as twelve in my mind. <laughs> but um, yeah, really really good to see those guys. Um, looks again like they've been picked up in Europe and Oceania more than they have in in the US, which uh, again I always find. I always find quite uh, quite interesting. Um, another strong affiliation, you know, Web Warriors. They've been around for a little while. Midnight Suns coming in next. Yeah. Black Order. Now, of all the affiliations on this list, I think Black Order are going to be the one that move up once people get to make changes. Because I think a lot uh -oh, of people... Of course, the grunts, right? 
Yes, yeah. Mm. Well, you've got the grunts. I also think a lot of people were in the mindset of Black Order have been nerfed. No, when, that's completely wrong. When they, they, as we've seen, they most definitely haven't. I think the initial thought was, oh, that's a bit of a, you know, that's a bit of a nerf, but there's, they are stronger than they have than they have ever been. Um, going all the way down to the bottom, then I mean X Men, they always getting out in. There's a lot of love for X Men. Um, DD, not surprised. You know they have um, they've seen uh, or the, you know they're so easy to dual affiliate with. It's no surprise there. We're kind of. I also actually think oh, that's God, probably sorry. why we see a lot of Black Order. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, like they're very easy to do for it, affiliate. Like we said, that could be a reason why their numbers are so high. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wakanda dropped way down, way way all, down. All there. from Grace. Yeah, their their stock has their stock has diminished significantly. Um, Asgard. I mean, Asgard are actually doing better than I thought. They are ahead of one, two, three, four, four affiliations. I thought they would have been behind. Um, and I include unaffiliated in that in that list. Um, I'm not so, sure about them being behind in humans. Uh, defenders, actually. You know, in, in humans at least have some game plans. Defenders are fairly real. They've got good characters. I'm not trying um, to say nice things about defenders. Yeah, I know, we, all I know. Know. we all know they're in a bad state. The one that really does surprise me, Quinn, is is Cabal. Um, I I'd have thought just. Just because of who they are, they would have got more gameplay. I still think Red Skull has got one of the best leadership abilities in the game, or at least you know it's it's the mo- one of the most consistent leadership abilities in the because game. Because of who they are, do you mean Nazis, Rich? <laughs> Nazis, yeah. I thought more people would want <laughs> would to play them. The, the cause, no, right? Because because they are one of the founding affiliations mm. of the game. It's it's weird to see that. Of the two, you know, Cabal are fourth from bottom and Avengers well, are top. I mean, when you think of it in terms of, like, how 1.5 affected them, uh, I don't think Cabal actually got a single buff bar the bullseye change. And they got, like, you know, Modok, one of their central pieces, to be nerfed, right? Along with Enchantress as well, who you, was, like, quite an important character for You say Modok was nerfed. I mean... He's still pretty damn oh, good. Oh, he, he's still good. Like, he's still very good at killing, but he lost most of his control. He, d- he did lose, yes, he did. He did lose that side of it, yeah. Um, so, yeah, really interesting. And then, yeah, bottom of the pile in humans. Uh, and then, obviously, obviously unfil- unaffiliated, absolute bottom of the pile. But, yeah, in humans, in humans down there. Um, let's have a quick look then, Quinn, at the characters. So, if we remember, I think last season... Um, it was and Chance somebody for surely sixty three. No, no, no. It was a Koye. A Koye oh, was the most. I want to say like sixty three percent of rosters, so over half had a Koye in them. Um, do you want to know where a Koye is now? <laughs> She's at fourteen percent, Rich. Fourteen percent, and I think we spoke about it before, Quinn. Okoye is as good as she was in the right affiliation. Mm. So in a um in a Wakanda, right? She's okay. Um I actually think she's she's not too bad in any affiliation that can either generate or reduce the cost of her abilities. So you know, generate power, reduce abilities. So A4, she's still super good in because you can, you know, you can plow power into her. Um who else? You know, Brotherhood. She's okay, but I think with I think there's better options for protecting uh, uh, Magneto. Yeah. Um, uh, Avengers in the vein of power discounts. Avengers in the vein of power discounts, but then you go, do you really need another bodyguard when you've got Luke and and, and Steve? Steve? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's no surprise that she's gone down in value. Um, but Quinn, your boys at the top, Doctor Voodoo. Um, we spoke about it for a while, Quinn. He is the most splashable i'm not going to say the most splashable character in the game because he's a four threat and therefore the more expensive a character is the more it's more of a hindrance to them being a splashable yeah, so character the, the um, threat a character is like the more of a tax there is on yes, taking them out of affiliation yeah. but i think the one of the one of the things about voodoo is is that yes he's got a card but it's shit 
So you don't, you know, it's just one character slot. Mm. And boy, he brings a lot. He, well, he, he has lot. massive impact on whatever game he's in. Yeah. Yeah, so no no surprise to see uh to see him there. I think um 33% in Oceana, um, which is is the lowest of them all, but obviously because there's fewer players playing in Oceana, it has less of an impact, you know, overall. Um Black Cat next, uh at 41%, so just just behind Voodoo. I mean, th- this is like, you know, your, your Poundland version of Old Enchantress, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So for anyone looking at the at the extract play, um, that's, you know, that's who you look to now uh, for, for, for that steal ability that doesn't cost an action. Um, again, in Europe, less, you know, 38%. So underneath underneath the curve there. I mean, we, we had more Voodoo, though. We did have more voodoo, yeah. We were propping up voodoo, and then Tud uh, in in fourth spot, which is it's not a surprise, but I'm surprised that Bullseye wasn't ahead of him in terms of the of the two threats. So um, I think it very much depends on like what your affiliation's game plan is, right? If it's like point based, you take Toad because he's very much like an extra running two. He threat. is, yeah, yeah, uh, and like yeah, Bullseye can help you kill stuff, but equally like he generally does like two points of chip damage a turn, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Quinn, talk to me about Lizard. Because right, well. Lizard is way up there, and I'm starting to see Lizard now more and more and more, both in affiliation, but as a splash character as well. Yeah, uh, so some of the main reasons that Lizard has taken is, uh, one, he is extremely durable, right? Very much so. 4-3-3 yes. three, three with reduction and healing factor, plus, like, I think 6-5 stamina, something like that? Yes, yep. I, I should know this, I play spider Um But yeah, like, so, one, he's very durable. Two, he is very mobile. And, yep. the, like, the reason he's mobile isn't necessarily because of what's on his card, but rather what's not on his card, if that makes sense. Uh, okay. Because Lizard doesn't have very good attacks. Therefore, you're less incentivized to make attacks with Lizard. Therefore, you feel less of a waste or loss when you do move actions with him, right? Yeah, that's a fair because, point. You know, there, there are other, like, you know, medium-based, medium-move characters out there. There are probably even some that have wall crawler as well. Uh, in fact, Carnage does. Carnage does, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. They're just as fast. Um, but yeah, like that that sort of lack of incentive to attack with him, unless like, you know, you're really fishing for that wild to get a push. Well, he doesn't you care, really does he? He, does, he? he, you know, and like you see, he can soak that damage up so well um, that, yeah, I mean, he was, you know, just played a game against him and he was just so difficult to take down. So Yeah, I think he like marched into your like home point round one and t- took your key, right? He did, right? yeah, absolutely did. I mean, he was, he was dazed for it. But it took three characters. It took two shots from Star Lord. It took a um, an attack from Ronan and then an attack from Ghost Rider to take him down. Yeah, so and four... I imagine like that pulled resources away from you setting up for round two, right? Yep, absolutely. Which you know absolutely. is another function that he performs. And being at that sort of three threat sort of price point means that he's a lot more splashable than the likes of Voodoo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there are certain factions that just need that tanky character to be, like, effectively, you know, a distraction card effect, right? Speaking of tanky characters, Quinn, the, the winner of the new of the new characters, um, only just, only just, is your boy, uh, Kane. It's Juggernaut. 25% uh, I'm, of... I'm very disappointed you didn't say Cassandra Nova there. <laughs> <laughs> you got up with, like, ooh, tanky, and then you went with Juggernaut. I did, I did, yeah. Uh, so 25%, followed by Rogue at 23. Scarlet Witch is still up there. We know she's a great splash character. Hood is another character that people are loving at the moment. That rapid fire, um, rapid yep. fire mystic. Plus mystic then, arm. empowered dark and lightning is, is super, super and good. Healing. Uh, especially because he's criminal syndicate affiliated, you yep. heal like Kingpin. If he has the power, he can ignore the bleed damage. He can indeed. Yeah, he can indeed. We're not going to go through the full uh, the full list, but the one I wanted to look at, Quinn, is uh, Steve versus Sam. Absolutely, Steve is winning out there, not by a lot. Um, 
surprisingly, so it's only 14% to 13%, but surprisingly in Europe, he's been, Sam is being taken more than, uh, also than in Steve. Central, looks like. Yes, yeah, in Central as well. So, uh, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting on that side. Bottom of the pile, Quinn. Uh, let's go through the bottom three because there's no surprises here, I don't think. Viper, third from bottom. What? Yeah, I boy. Mean, you're taking Viper, though. Isn't she good? What? I was I was really surprised that other people took her. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, me and Quinn were trying to mess with these stats as, stats as much as possible, and you'll see... You'll see an example of how that uh, has happened uh, a little bit further down. Black Widow, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, I think her stock is going to shoot through the roof oh, it is going the, to moment, skyrocket with the moment Fury, S.H.I.E.L.D. Right? come out. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then, Quinn, can we just get a little a little, viol- a little, a little oh, violin little violin playing? Violin. The ballerina of Hell's Kitchen has been taken by a grand total in almost 300 rosters. Zero times. Uh, um, he didn't even get an opportunity to sing his swan song. He did not. No, he did not. Um, he's just bad. Like, I know, Quinn, we always talk about, don't we, how every character is viable, but he's four threat, and there are so many better four threat characters. I mean, to you, take. you always spout this every character <laughs> is viable crap. I don't. <laughs> I think he's shit, because he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's Maybe someone's bad. favorite character, and that's like cool, play him, but yeah, like. No, just play Shadow Lands Daredevil. He's way better. <laughs> uh, let's have a quick look at Crisis cards then, Quinn. So Demons Downtown, no surprise there. Um, yep. It's, it's you know, it goes in almost every roster. It uh, goes in every attrition list, right? Just Yeah, always. very much. Pr- pretty much, yeah. Yeah, Infinity Formula, Intrusions. Uh, I'm just trying to look. Super Powered Scoundrels form Sinister Syndicate, 23%, so quite high. I think people like, like higher threat, higher VP scoring, maybe. I mean, um, like for a, for you know a crisis that has just come out, that is a lot, uh, yes. and I think that's because you know things like Sam and Web Warriors and potentially Syndicate really like being able to score like five on the um, secure. Yeah. So the one thing I'm going to say about that is I've been playing Guardians. I put it in my roster. Um, I will be immediately taking it out. At well, yeah, because you're a long range faction. Why would you give your opponent cover for free? Well, I think I think what happened was is originally I was going to have X twenty three and Honey Badger in there, mm. and the idea was is that they could just get up and just start murdering things. Um, you know, re rolls on on X twenty three feels really nice, um, but yeah, I dropped them and didn't drop this. So uh, yeah, it is it is what it and is. What you're saying is you were extremely clever. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Extracts, Quinn, Fear Grips, you know, it reigns supreme again. I know not everybody likes a hammer, but apparently 60% of people like a hammer, okay? Um, but yeah, it, it, it's for most attrition lists. In fact, for all attrition lists, it's in there. Alien ships in there as well. There's so many circumstances where people want that. Research stations in there as well at 30%, which I was quite surprised at. Um, Deadly Legacy Virus at 30%. All the way down at the bottom, then, Quinn, is Montessi. Uh, I, I, I'm fairly certain I know why this is as well. Far away. So, one, it's low scoring. Yep. Uh, two, the beam attacks from Montessi are not actually beneficial to the people doing them. Because they don't generate just, power, do they? Exactly. To elaborate on that, like, they sure, it's, you know, a six dice range three beam, and it's energy, which is one of the better attack types in the game. Uh, but, like, the, the fact that you're spending actions on an attack that is, you know, s- slightly above average. Like, it's a beam, so you get to do it multiple times if you're in the right spot for it. But, like, you know, it's not, like, a super amazing attack. It's not got, like, any conditions or any sort of, no. like, other stuff attached to it. Uh, it's not generating you any power. Uh, so, like, you'd typically rather just want to do either a builder or a spender, right? It's It's also a single... It's 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 a, a one that uh, you can only hold one book at a time. I want to say only as well. One book at a time and can only do one beam a turn with it. Yes, you can only use it once per turn. So, yeah, not not surprised. Not surprised. Um, Quinn tactics cards. We called it. We oh. said it was going to be the most taken 
tactics card. It beats out every, not does it beat out every other card, Quinn. It also beats out every other restricted card in the game. You say other restricted, it's not restricted Sorry, yet. it's not restricted yet, no. Uh, indomitable, 66%. Um, so with the exception, oh no, not everything. So taken, Indomitable has been taken in more rosters than any other single thing in the game. And if that doesn't tell you everything you need to know about how good Indomitable is and the impact it's having on the game and why it should be restricted, well, nah, I don't know. There you go. Um, I, do, I do want to quickly call out uh, all, all of us Europeans for being cheesemongering shites and taking it 72% of the yep, time. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's in both of our rosters, I think. It's not in mine. It's not in mine, no. Oh, I don't need I mean, it. We've already gone over you making bad decisions with your roster this season, though. This is this is true. Yeah, this is true. Uh, Med pack brace field dressing, unsurprisingly up there. What I want to call out, Quinn, sacrifice. People don't know how to use this card the card yet. Um, I think it's going to drop significantly once people realise it's the downsides of it. Uh, mm. is, is is what I will say. I'm not going to get into more details because there may be a video coming up about it, Ooh. but, I but mean, yeah. You know, um, like, the, the whole thing with sacrifices, this is basically the, you know, band-aid to patch over the void of Okoye, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Quinn, let's have a look at character-specific tactics cards and then the relationship between uh, Taken and... Yeah. You know how many people actually take. We, the we can also talk about my failing. <laughs> this is true. This is true. So, so, Age of Ultron with Ultron. I mean, hundred percent. Like, of course. Like, nobody's. Why on earth would anyone take a card that brings a character back to life after dying? Why would they not take that? I know, right? The six people who have got Ghost Rider in their roster. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Well, in fact, actually, it's not even six people no, because you it take it as well. <laughs> um, big ones for me, Quinn, that stand out, I'm going to say, are um, Heroes for Hire, arguably the best reactive tactics card in the game right now. Um, indomitable. Indomitable, indomitable, indomitable is there, actually. Yes, you are right. But but um, one of the best, without, without a shadow a of a doubt. It's a pretty good character card. Yeah. Um, Deal. Let's 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 address what is the deal with deal with the devil. So, for anyone that doesn't know, what does deal with the devil do? Well, deal with the devil. If Ghost Rider has activated this turn, okay, he's got an activation token on him. That's the scenario. He's injured on his injured side. He is then KO'd. He can then pick any other character on the board that is in part of his squad. Um, that isn't currently dazed. That isn't currently dazed. Um, and take over their body. So you basically place him within range one. Now, what are the kickers on this? Well, he drops all of his tokens that he's holding. That's yep, both special special condition. Uh, yeah, before he moves, that's important. That's both special condition. That is any assets. That is any um, other things that he's got, right? So a bit of rivals or anything else that he's got on him. He keeps all of his power. The other token that he drops is his activation token. Um, and then depending on whether it's a healthy or an injured character, he comes back on either his healthy or his injured side. So you with can no damage. <laughs> with no damage, you can sacrifice a two threat character to bring back Ghost Rider with an activation remaining. Yep. And it's amazing. With typically, I'd imagine about six power because if Ghost Rider dies, he's usually got ten power on him. He's usually got a lot of power on him. Oh, so, and then also he incinerates everyone oh, around him. Everyone within range. Is it range two or range one? Quid? Well, I can't remember. Range which. two of his final placement, which is yeah. within range one of the person he's possessing. Yeah. So it's it's hard, Quinn, to think of a card that is more bound to a character than that one, like. You know, yes, sometimes I might not have I might not have room for do you know who I am with Juggernaut. I mean it's rare, but it may happen. But it 
doesn't it doesn't ultimately affect the way that the character is played with ghost rider the whole thing with ghost rider is if you if your opponent focuses down ghost rider he gets to just come back if your opponent focuses down other team members Ghost Rider gets loads of power <laughs> and just obliterates and, and everyone. And also does damage to them for crits. Yeah. So, you know, it's pretty good. Really surprised. I was really, really surprised um, that that, you know, that, that was so low as well. So, so low. So, I mean, we had, um, we had 43 people that were taking Ghost Rider and only 37 of them have taken deal with the devil uh, we i think know, you'll find it's 36 of them <laughs> we know damn well that quinn is one of those people yeah, and he doesn't have go <laughs> he doesn't have ghost rider so yeah really really strange um so yeah just did, did not did not expect that one at all um there's no other ones that really stand out for me actually the one that i did look at uh scarlet witch no more mutants is at seventy percent, but then the whims of chaos is only at twenty nine percent. Which whims of chaos guys do not sleep on that card. I mean, like is... you yourself slept on that card did... for a long time until I enlightened you, right? I really did, and it is, that card is so good. It is phenomenal. Absolutely you, you can phenomenal. use it not only to heal your teammates or get rid of annoying conditions like Root or Stagger or Stun, you can also use it as a Suedo Bitter Rivals by <laughs> incinerating everyone within range 3 of Scarlet Witch. Yep. That's it for the stats. But literally, Quinn, just as I was talking then, um, we've had a little picture revealed. Oh, have we? Do you want to go check out Twitter? Uh, oh god, it's a cesspool, but I guess I will. <laughs> so guys, Atomic Mask Games have just released. When the world needs a shield, these heroes, so specifically says, these heroes are ready to answer the call. Begin, begin building your Marvel Crows, blah, 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 blah. But, who's on the picture, Quinn? Should we go through who is on there? Shall we go left to right? <laughs> Let's go left to right. Well, I mean, of it, first, front and centre, obviously, you've got your boy. Uh, Mr. Mick and Mr. Nicholas uh, Nicholas Junior Fury Mick, Mick, Nicholas J Fury Junior. There we go. Um, Jesus. Hawkeye and Black Widow. Now they're showing Black Agent Widow. Of Shield. Agent of Shield. I would be shocked if, if Two Threat wasn't Two in Threat there. wasn't yeah. in there. Like really, really shocked. Um, we've got some Iron Man action, Quinn. Um, mm. Which I'm. I suppose he has been a leader of them. Uh, like before. Tony was director of Shield for a while. Yeah. Like so, in big sense. You know, he's in there. I think him being affiliated with things like Helios gets quite interesting. Yeah. Um, you've also got your boy War Machine, who yeah, yeah. Um, you know, is he typically like Shield affiliated? I thought he was just like sort of US. He's Air like Force. government, isn't he? So yeah, but he's so a interesting one. Yeah. Winter Soldier. Ah. Oh. Now, Winter Soldier is obviously a rogue agent. Did you just say Winter Shoulder? Win winter Soldier. I mean, he has a Winter Shoulder. He's got, you know, <laughs> he's got the metal arm. Winter Soldier is obviously a rogue agent. Could we see him in an affiliation? I mean, or is he just there that. making the numbers up? When there's another rogue agent that's in this picture... Yeah. Taskmaster's there. Of course. Yeah, so so actually, precedent has been set. Taskmaster is in... Um, Syndicate. Syndicate. So yeah, absolutely. So maybe Winter, so Winter Soldier. This is a very... Uh, this is a very shooty-shooty list I can see yeah, being put I'm, together I'm, here. Oh, actually, um, if Got Your Back doesn't get changed to say non-grunt, that could be good. Really good, Yeah. And then round it out. Every list, every list needs some muscle, Quinn. Right, and um, you know, she Jenny from Jenny, Jenny from, from the block. Jenny from the block is no different. So, uh, or Shield are no different, should I say? So, really interesting. I mean, first of all, Quinn, let's talk about the play style. I mean, it's it's going to come down to the tactics cards, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, there's ten of them. <laughs> there is ten of them. Yeah. 
So that will have a real big impact on I also how the don't game think, is played for them. I, I, I don't think this picture represents the full roster. Who else? We've already said Natasha Cor yeah, Corbox. We, we, we've said Corbox Widow. Um, I would imagine that we see both Captain Americas in there. See, I don't think we are. I don't mm. think we're going to see both. I think we could see Sam and not Steve. I mean, S Sam's the one I care most about. Sam's the one there. that you want from the control aspect, right? Um, yeah, and also, you know, he becomes an inaffiliation long mover, right? Which is just yeah. what we were talking about. With a with a drop off thing, not not drop off, but you with know, with a placement thing, with a yeah. placement thing, which is which is quite nice. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, there we go, guys. That is that is the the new picture that's come out. So we didn't get Electra, but we got a picture of some characters that we all already know. Um, um, yeah, the, the, what, once again, lies, deception, every day, more lies. <laughs> it's so true, it's so true. So guys, I want to take just a couple of minutes to give you guys a bit of an update with regards to what's happening with the channel, uh, and specifically around our Patreon that we've got up and running now. We've got three tiers on there, a uh, £1 tier, a £3 tier, and a £5 tier, but also the monthly event that we're going to be running starting from the 1st of March. So if you're part of the Discord, you may have already seen details around this, but we're going to be running a Patreon-only event. Uh, it'll run for the entire month and it'll be three games in total so plenty of time for you to get your games in we'll be running games both in real life and on tts so if you get paid against someone that is close enough by that you can play them absolutely no problem playing those games in real life but if you get paid against somebody across the pond it'll be over tts so you need to have access to that really to make full use of it um but at the end of each uh, each event, we'll be dishing out a number of points. You get points for participation. You get points for winning matches. You also then get points for being the overall champion of each event or each month's champion. You can then use those points and convert them into prizes. Uh, so you guys know Elysium War Games have been a long time sponsor of the channel, uh, but they're based in the UK, so they're not accessible to everyone. We've also partnered with Discount Games over in the US, uh, so you'll be able to convert those points into gift vouchers that you can spend at either of those stores. You'll also be able to convert those points to buy merch from the Rich Mid Gaming merch store. So guys, if you want to get involved, we are going to be doing giveaways as well. Um, so during some videos sporadically spread out through each month, uh, we will be we will be doing giveaways. There'll be random giveaways on the Discord server as well. Um, so make sure you check out those two places. Make sure you keep an eye on every video that we do. Um, we'll be giving away free tickets uh, for, for each of the events themselves. But your way to guarantee yourself a ticket each and every month is by supporting us over on Patreon. For all those people that have already supported us on Patreon, thank you so much. It really, really does help with the day-to-day, week-to-week running of the channel and enabling us to make brand new content. So thank you very much for that. And for all of those, all of you guys out there who upped your pledge uh, after I announced the events, thank you again so much. Uh, hopefully you'll really enjoy access to that event. And uh, yeah, it'll be a really fun thing that we can do every single month. And you'll be in with a chance to win some great prizes as well. Now let's get back to the normal show. Quinn, on to the one of my favourite parts of, of the weekly show that we do. It is time for Do You Even Paint the And last week, I do believe, Quinn, if, I, if my memory doth serve me correct, um, you chose Juggernauts. Now, not necessarily the Juggernaut, but um, any character on a 65mm base. I think yep, that's right, isn't it? The specific wording was the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut, yes. So, as always, guys... We've got uh, two honourable mentions and a winner. Everyone that's entered will be entered into our prize draw, which will be coming up probably at the end of March is when we're looking at doing it. Um, but uh, yeah, let's jump in and let's take a look at the first honourable mention. So apologies if I butcher the pronunciation of this, but Isebio, Usebio, apologies. Um, I think it's like Eswebio, isn't Eswebio, it? Eswebio, maybe. Um, but Quinn, I, I mean... What I'm going to say is the standard of paint jobs on this particular one have been some of the highest we've seen. And I don't know if it's because 65 mil base means bigger characters. Therefore, people 
maybe want to spend more time on them. I, or... I, I think it's definitely something to do with sort of like centerpiece models. Yes, right? yeah, but oh my word, what an amazing Hulkbuster. Mm. Just very, very nice. It looks like non-metallic metal all the way around, which yeah. I did start and then very quickly gave up yeah, on. You were stupid enough to start that endeavour. Yeah, mm-hmm. but this boy... Oh, girl, sorry, I don't know, but this guy, the, the, the absolutely amazing job. Really, really nice. And then the second honourable mention goes to, again, I'm going to apologise in advance, uh, but uh, in Cariel, in Sariel, something like that. In um, Cariel. <clears throat> in Cariel, uh, with a really, really clean Dormammu. Um, really like the, the shading on there. Love the flame effect. Uh, looks a little bit cartoony on the flame effect, but I don't... I don't mind that, but overall, just a really, really nice, clean, uh, nice, clean paint yeah, job. You're uh, really happy that there are paint pots in the background. <laughs> Stop putting fucking paint pots in the background. Um, <laughs> nice, nice background is really well appreciated. Now, now, now I, you know, I, I'm going to put out a call to action. Everybody have paint pots <laughs> in the background for the next one because he picks it. <laughs> but Quinn, um, a, a last minute entry. Um, or the last entry of, 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 of them all. Uh, it was a Ghost Rider by uh, John B., I think it was. Um, and, oh my word, just phenomenal. I mean, they, they've got it as their profile picture as well, and I can see why. I can Jesus see why, Christ. yeah. I mean, first of all, you look at it and I go, I love the chain. Like, that looks mm. like they've done like a non-metallic metal, but then reflecting the flames... It's sort of got like a thin sort of sh- like shimmer of fire yeah, on it. Yeah, really, really good. The flames around the skull are just so clean. The really super high highlights on the bike and his jacket and everything else are really, really good. I love the base work, Quinn. Mm. Um, the sort of tread mark, the flame tread mark is super, super good. Even the little tufts of grass that have grown out of the cracks in the pavement just add so much to it. I mean, there's the old saying, isn't there? Bases and faces um, can can make a model. And yeah, I mean, the, the rest of the model on this is really good, but in particular, the face and the base on this model are absolutely phenomenal. Really, really good. Really, really good. Yeah, absolutely beautiful look. Yeah. So you are our winner of the week. You don't win anything, but you do get put up onto our wall of fame. Um, And, Quinn, you chose last week, so it means that I get to choose this week. Mm -hmm. Um, And I like your boring choice. I think we're going to mix it up. In honour of receiving this in the post earlier this week, the theme is going to be, Quinn, Marvel Couples. So it doesn't necessarily have to be... um, Two people that are either married or in a relationship or anything like that. But, you know, two characters who are synonymous with each other, so, right? So, rather than Marvel couples, it's Marvel pairings, shall we say? Marvel pair. Well, I would you still call them Marvel couples, right? You know, pairings, couples, whatever you want. So you need two characters um, who are, you know, who are, you know, synonymous of, of being together, right? So it could I, be I, I Rogue will, and Gambit. Um, I, I will warn everyone. At home, um, if you, uh, you know, if you put in Corvus and Proxima, I will fight staunchly <laughs> to make sure that they do not ever see the light of day. I will delete them from the channel on the Discord. I have that power. Um, so yeah, Marvel couples, uh, you can post whatever characters you want. As long as they, you know, they have a, um, a relationship with each other. Um, so it could be, you know, a Miss Marvel and a... Uh, Captain Marvel, for example, it could be Corvus and Proxima, it could be X twenty three and Honey Badger. Um, R- you know, Skull and Magneto, that well known pairing that we see in the affiliation <laughs> list. <laughs> yeah, that's mm. a weird one. You know, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, right? Yeah. Scarlet Witch and Vision. Okay, so there's so Sam many and combinations. Salmon Winter Soldier. Salmon Winter Soldier. Yeah, I do like that Steve, one actually. Stephen yeah. Winter Soldier. Like you know. Yeah, there's there's a the lot. Winter Soldier gets around apparently. Yeah, 
Yeah, Winter Soldier is well. He is, you know, he is a he is a rogue agent, isn't he? He just pops up everywhere. So that's the that is the theme for this week, guys. So um, head over to the Discord. You'll find a, a space in there where you can post all of your pictures. Um, Quinn, that's really it for this week. Um, yeah. There's Once not again, much not much no more to go through, really. No yeah, so mm. you know we got a little teaser halfway through there, which was quite nice. Um, but yeah, other than that, there's not really much to, to 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 get into. Hopefully next week we have some more character cards, some breakdowns and that sort of thing that we get to do as well. Um, guys, if you've liked this video in any shape or form, um, hit that like button. It, it really, really does help. Leave a comment as well. That also really, really helps. Uh, let us know who comments this week, guys. Let us know who you think is going to be uh, in the uh, in the shield affiliation let us know who you think in addition to the picture are going to be uh, going to be in there if you want to support the channel even further we do have a patreon now uh, one of those levels as i mentioned earlier uh, will have access to our monthly event the first one starting on the 1st of march and off the back end of that you can win all sorts of prizes and things as well so make sure you uh, you check that out and you know support us if you want to be part of those events We've also got a Discord. Uh, head on over there. It's completely free of charge. Um, we do roster discussions. We've got, as I said, the painting competitions. We can find the battle cards that we publish uh, for for each of the weekly videos of the Ultimate Guides. So head on over there and check that out as well. As always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now. See you.